Hello my friends, this is Noah with Learn Meta Analysis, and today I want to talk a little bit about my new daily driver model. So if you remember, a while ago we were talking about Quen3, and I think I tested the 8 billion parameter version of Quen3, which is the kind of the standard one that they have you download, and I wasn't very impressed by it. Honestly, I, I really wasn't impressed at all. I, I, I thought it was fine. It just wasn't something I really wanted to use. It wasn't better than, to me, for my use cases, it wasn't better than what I was already using. But a little while ago, maybe a week or two ago, I circled back to Quen, and the reason is because I was thinking about architectures. I've been thinking about this a lot for some projects I have going on with work, and I got really intrigued by a mixture of experts. And then Llama 4 dropped, and Llama 4 was a mixture of experts model. And I kept seeing more and more and more about mixture of experts. So I wanted to know, is it really all people say it is, or is it just a gimmick? Right? So I went down and historically speaking, the Quen 32 billion parameter models have performed pretty well from what I remember. I think the 32 billion Quen 2 or 2.5 uh, was a, one of the ones that benchmarked pretty high. And so when I started looking at this, I was like, well, these are essentially the same size model, 19 gigabytes for the mixture of experts and 20 gigabytes for the dense model. And so as we start looking at the actual scores for them, it comes down here. And if you look, the MOE model, that, that's this one, the Quen 330B, that actually benchmarks a little tiny bit better on many of these benchmarks than the 32 billion parameter model. Um, and don't ask me to quantify, like, number one, I have no idea what, like, BFCL is, but I also have zero frame of reference for what three points higher on BFCL actually means. My guess is that's relatively inconsequential, so <laughs> I don't really care about that. What I cared about was I remember people talking about this QWQ32B model performing pretty well. And so I was really curious to see how the 30B A3 worked out. So let's talk really quickly about the way that LLMs are put together or the architecture of some LLMs. And I just wanna preface this by saying, I'm only gonna talk about dense models and mixture of experts models. Like for example, there's other models, there's just really cool, Granite 4 is gonna be this really cool hybrid architecture that I'm not gonna talk about in this video because I will way nerd out, but it's going to be way more computationally efficient if everything they say about it is true. But that said, let's check out why MOE models are more computationally efficient than a dense model. All right, friends, so let's talk real quick about the way that LLMs actually work or the architecture of LLMs. So I'm going to use the very basic language of conceptual understanding, not the fully comprehensive completely scientifically accurate understanding. So when we think about an LLM, a lot of times we're talking about dense LLMs. And that means that in normal people words, whatever the size of the model, all of that is going to be activated at once. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at Quen, 30, Quen 3 32 billion parameters and also Quen 3 30 billion parameters with three billion parameters active at any one time because it's a mixture of experts model. So. For context, I have an eight gigabyte graphics card and then I have 32 gigabytes of regular RAM. So if we envision this model here, what we can see is the information comes in, that's our prompt, it goes to the model. So in a normal LLM like Quen 32B, all 32 billion parameters are gonna be activated all at once. And that's going to be computationally expensive on a machine like mine where I only have eight gigabytes of VRAM because this is a 20 gigabyte model. So not all of those 20 gigabytes fit within the VRAM, which means I'm gonna be slowed down by my regular RAM a lot. So the prompt comes in, it goes into that whole model. All 32 billion parameters are trying to figure out whatever we asked it, and then we get a response. Now let's compare that to a mixture of experts model, okay? And so this is a really, I'd say high level conceptual diagram of what a mixture of experts model might look like. And I know those of you out there who know more about uh, architecture, you're like, well, you don't show the shared expert, you don't show the integration layer. Yeah, 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 I know. We're talking conceptual here, okay? So let's talk conceptually about a mixture of experts model. Now, Quen uh, 3, 30B, is 30 billion parameters, okay? So that means it's about the same size model. I think it's 19 gigabytes. So again, eight gigabytes is gonna go into my VRAM on my GPU. The rest is gonna be offloaded to the regular RAM which would make it kind of slow. So the information, our prompt comes in. And instead of going directly and activating that entire thing, it's instead gonna to go to a router. And that router is gonna say, hey, we have a piece of this model that actually knows that type of information. And then it's gonna send it to one of the specific experts. Okay, so what that does, prompt comes in, the router says, oh, that's expert four. It goes to expert four, then it comes out as your response. So what's the difference here? The difference is, 
In the dense model that we looked at before, all 32 billion parameters are active when it's trying to solve that problem. Meanwhile, in the mixture of experts model, we only have 3 billion active parameters. Okay, so it's much less computationally expensive, or you could think of it as being much more computationally efficient. And what this means is you're going to see a massive speed difference when it comes to actually running this model, a mixture of experts model, on a machine like mine, where the entire model can't fit into the VRAM. It has to spill over into the RAM. And what this means is that mixture of experts models might be a really good way to leverage your compute that you have if you have enough regular RAM available for the rest of the model. Because, as you're going to see here in a few minutes, when we compare these two models directly to one another, you'll see that the mixture of experts model, even though it didn't fit completely within VRAM, it, it fits the same amount basically, you know, within a gigabyte or so of the dense model. It's still much, much faster. In this case, um, I already filmed the end of the video and I, <laughs> I'm honest, I honestly don't remember the speed difference, but I think it was like five to six times faster using an MOE model. And that's why they offer such big advantages on normal computer equipment like you know you or I have. Uh, the other thing is if you have a Mac, I do not have a Mac to test this on, but Macs have that unified memory in their new architecture. I say new, it's been out for five or six years now. So in that architecture where they have the unified memory, a mixture of experts model might be really effective, right? Because you can use a really big model, especially if you have a 32 gig uh, uh, Mac, then you can probably fit this MOE model in there. And it'll probably be, I don't know for sure, if you have a Mac, I would love to hear the numbers if you have time to test the, the 32 billion parameter model to the 30 billion A3 model. So if any of you guys have a Mac and feel like testing that and dropping the, the tokens per second down in the comments, really curious about how this works out. But from some of the numbers I've seen using the bigger Quen model on Macs on Reddit and stuff, it works pretty quickly on the Mac hardware. So that said, let's go ahead and get into actually testing these models. So you can see I have my Quen 3 30B, and now I'm going to also activate my Quen 3 32 billion. And we are going to get them warmed up just with a simple hello. And we are going to let those run. And I want you to pay attention to the speed, okay? So this is a big model. It has to load. It's going to fill up my 8 gigs of VRAM, and then it's going to push the rest into my regular RAM. So as you can see, okay, we are just now at the thinking stage, just getting into thinking for the 30B A3 mixture of experts. Okay, so it thought for five seconds, you saw how fast that was. I didn't even have a chance to click the thinking button to see it print all that. Now we're trying to load the 32 billion parameter model. Loading should take about the same amount of time in my limited experience testing both of them, but we're going to give it just a second. Okay, so here, I wanna show you the difference. Look at the speed that it is printing the thinking. This is pretty slow, right? This is pretty slow. You can probably see, I'm gonna open up the thoughts here on the other one. I think we're gonna end up with pretty much equivalent length of thinking, but we are going to see major differences in the amount of time that it takes. Okay, there we go. So the mixture of experts model, Again, is the same size, 32 billion parameters. Over here, we thought for five seconds. On this side, we thought the exact same amount of text, but it took 29 seconds. For those of you who don't love math like I do, that is six times slower, six times slower. Okay, now let's talk about tokens. Over here on the left, again, I have an eight gigabyte graphics card and we're running a 30, 30 billion parameter model. So response tokens here, 15, second, uh, 15 per second. Response tokens on the 32 billion parameter dense model. 2.6 okay so now you're you might be thinking well Noah, that's the warm-up step uh what about after the models are loaded okay we'll try one more so i'm gonna say something short hopefully um because i don't want to wait for this 32 billion parameter model too long so we'll say can you hear me and again first thing it's going to do is going to load that model it's going to take a little bit of time because it's big it's 20 gigabytes that's a lot, and it doesn't all fit in VRAM, so then it's going to spill it over into the regular RAM. Right about now is when we should start think seeing some thinking coming along from whichever model loaded first, which if it sticks with the past one, it's going to be this one over here on the left. Nope, I was wrong. <laughs> okay, I think it does that just to, just to spite me. It went with the same one that was going uh, last year, which was the Quen 332B. So it is thinking, I'll open this for those of you who like to see it quote unquote think, and I promise I'm not gonna use right now to go on my rant about how I don't like the term thinking or reasoning because I don't believe that's what it's actually doing. But that aside, I will just let this keep printing. Wow, this is boring. 
I can think of so many better things I could be doing right now than watching this this model think. Okay. Oh my gosh, I thought I was done. I was excited. Yeah, yeah. Add an emoji. Do that. Yeah. Oh, stop with the also. Just print the answer. Oh my gosh. Stop talking. Just print the answer. Thank you. It took it 50 seconds. Okay. Dense model. The dense model, 32 billion parameters, took 50 seconds to think, quote unquote think. And that time it processed it again at 2.6 response tokens per second. So that's pretty spot on estimate for tokens per second on this machine. Now we're going to try out the mixture of experts model and you're going to be dumbfounded at how much faster it is. Because like I said before, six times faster. Okay, it's thinking. I need to open this so you can see it. Look at how much faster it's printing, right? This is amazing. This is why mixture of experts is the future for larger models on small private computers. It's just so much. And look, it even thought way more than the other one did. Um, uh, it won't let me open both of them simultaneously. That's annoying. Okay. Anyway, you can see the amount that it thought was a little bit longer than the other one in terms of length, but 13 seconds instead of 50 seconds. Over here, response tokens, again, about 15, 14 and a half. So how much faster is that? Well, this one did 2.6. This one did 14.4. Let's say 3 and 15. So again, five times faster. So in this case, Mixture of Experts is letting us run five times faster than the dense model. So that said, I mentioned before, in a previous video, I wasn't actually very impressed with the small dense Quen3. And honestly, I'm not. The smaller dense models of Quen3, I wasn't super impressed. But this 30B A3 Mixture of Experts model, I really like this model so far in my, in my experiments with it. I have had it write emails for me. It's not great. It's not. It's no 5.4, but it's pretty good. Um, it's pretty good at that. It's done pretty well on scientific facts. It's done pretty well on a lot of different things. So, I mean, you guys, you guys know my question that a lot of these models get wrong is, what is the largest, lastest, what is the largest falcon in the world? We'll ask it that. Again, it's going to load up the model. Now it's going to do its thinking. And here you'll see it does think a little bit because that's what these models do. But it's going to get to the answer. And with all my previous experimentation, it always answers this question correctly. So as of now, I'm very, very happy with Quen 3 30B. Um, it has actually, uh, and I'm again, just to clarify, this is Quen 3 30B mixture of experts. Um, to be honest, it has become my daily driver. It's the one that I'm using the most right now. Um, I'm using it more than Granite for like typical just scientific questions. That really surprised me because you guys know I'm a Granite fanboy. I love Granite. I am still using Granite for RAG, and that's just because I haven't gotten to test out Quen 330B too much yet for RAG. Um, I did one or two quick tests earlier. It was pretty stinking good. It just takes longer. And so with RAG in particular, my database is pretty big right now. It's like 1,200 papers. So the bigger model did seem to take a little bit more time, but I also haven't put them side by side. It could just be a matter of it doing its reasoning as compared to the other. So as you can see, this got the answer right. Largest falcon in the world is the Jeer Falcon. It is Falco rusticolis. Um, I didn't go through and check the individual facts that it spits out about each one of these things, but uh, they look generally pretty solid from what I can see. So, okay, actually I take that back. There's one thing that is totally ridiculous. There's absolutely no way a Jeer Falcon weighs 8.8 .8 pounds. <laughs> so like, like I said, that, that is not accurate. But many of these other facts are where it lives is accurate, what it hunts is accurate. Um, the wingspan, I think, is pretty spot on. The length is pretty spot on. It's really just this high end of the weight is utterly ridiculous. There's there's no Jeer Falcon I've ever heard of that weighs 8.8 .8 pounds. So. What is the takeaway point from this video, friends? Takeaway point from this video. I'm really happy with Quen 3 30B A3, the mixture of experts model. I've been getting pretty stinking good results out of it, and you might too if you like the Quen model. So it's it's maybe worth experimenting with if you have enough VRAM and RAM to accommodate it. Uh, to give you an idea of the machine that I have, I have eight gigabyte graphics card, an RTX 4060, and I have 32 gigabytes of regular RAM, and this model has run fine. Uh, I haven't changed the context window too much, so 
The main point that I wanted to make here, was, other than the fact that I'm enjoying this model, is to compare the dense models to the mixture of experts models because as you've probably seen, the trend right now is mixture of experts. You've probably seen that the new Llama models are mixture of experts models. Uh, the new Quen models, obviously, as I just showed you, are mixture mixture of experts models. We'll see what happens with some of the other big players in the space. I don't know what's going to happen with the other publicly released models that are pretty major, but it wouldn't surprise me at all to see other relatively large mixture of experts models like this. I would love to see more people creating models like this Quen model that are around 30 or 40 billion parameters, but are a mixture of experts so that they can run quickly, like you saw on here, on smaller graphics cards. I think that would be an absolutely phenomenal breakthrough. Um, but that said, I hope you found this to be interesting. I know this was kind of short to the, to the point and not particularly scientific in any way, shape, or form. So as an example, I didn't talk about the shared expert that they have in some models um, or like the integration phase or anything that might happen after the information gets pushed from the expert back to the user. But like I said, this wasn't meant to be a completely scientifically accurate overview. It was just meant to give you a general idea of what is happening with these models. So. That said, I hope this has been helpful. I hope it's been a little bit informative. And if you like Mixture of Experts models and you want to give this one a try, I've had pretty good luck in the types of responses that's given me so far from Quen 330 b So that said, I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful afternoon, and I will see you all in the next video.